They call it Maine's most beloved vehicle, but it may be illegal to be on the road. She may be riding dirty, and we'll see mm. what Lisa has to say about this. First, though, quickly, we were just talking about this trailer for the new Val Kilmer documentary, which will be on Amazon Prime in August. It's in theaters for a couple of weeks at the end of the month. And Chris Tim said Heat is really good. He's only seen it. He saw it recently after seeing it in the theater. Second time ever. Me too. I don't know why. I never went back and watched it. Watched it that one time in the theater, and that's it. You've seen it twice. And he says that it's really good, but uh, Al Pacino overacts a little. Especially in one scene where he's interrogating mm -hmm. Hank Azaria character. And you did the scene, and mm -hmm. you said, she's got a, a great ass. Let's go to the actual. <laughs> let's. We now have the actual. You, got the clip? you heard Chris Dim's version of it. Now let's get Al Pacino's version of it. she got a great ass. And you got your head. All the way up it. <laughs> That's what sets him apart. All right. Is that great acting or overacting? You decide. You be the judge. I like Chris Dem's delivery. I did too. Oh, you guys. <laughs> oh, I thought it was very, very good. You weren't act you weren't overacting as much as Al Pacino. Yeah, she got a great ass. And you got your head all the way up it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're the yeah. best, but can you tone down a yeah, little? Yeah, little. <laughs> take it out. No, we got it. That's a print. That was toned down. <laughs> I can't do it any better. <laughs> Believe you me, that's the best. All right, print it. Lunch. <laughs> Let's go to lunch. Uh, Lisa Lanier is on the line. Now, usually she does lawyer up with us on Fridays, but sir, once in a this while, an emergency. a special story comes along that she has to get right on. Breaking news here. A woman named Brittany Glidden drives what is called Maine's most beloved vehicle, a 2013 Teal Chrysler Town & Country minivan. And it has an enormous... Teal. Teal. <laughs> and she, people, she says, love yeah. the minivan. It has an enormous custom-made logo that says MILF Mobile <laughs> plastered on the rear windshield. Uh, Lisa's done such work on this. She has sent now photos of, on the back windshield, it says MILF Mobile. There are also, apparently, stickers that say, kids up in this bitch, honk if one falls out. <laughs> Another sticker says, if you're going to ride my ass, at least pull my hair. That's your thing, Kelly. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that is my thing. Yeah. I like my hair pulled. All right. That's my thing. Yeah. Condoms prevent minivans, which I've also seen before. I've seen that. Oh, before. I haven't seen that one. That's pretty funny. And then her vanity plate says, tits out, T-I-T-S-O-U-T. <laughs> But she says that's a reference to her breastfeeding of all four of her children. Tits out. So wow. that's why she has that. Now, apparently Maine had a law passed a few years back allowing some of these fun types of things to be on there. But now some people are taking offense. and it's Other Mainers? Other Mainers. And uh, they are battling back and forth now. Maybe Lisa can shed some light on this. Hello, Lisa. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Yeah, this is uh, apparently... Maine is one of the few states, you know, the majority have restrictions on vanity plates, but in 2015, Maine lifted those restrictions. So you could put literally anything on your vanity plate, and people in Maine went just cuckoo, and they just, they have absolutely put every profane thing you can think of, <laughs> lots of death bombs. Maine, <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> it's out of control. So what has happened is uh, there's legislation pending that was, it's actually endorsed by the Secretary of State, and a lot of people in the administration in Maine, they've introduced legislation to go back to restricting profane vanity plates. And so that's likely where that's headed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with it's it's been pretty clear um, in these other states, since the majority of states regulate this, it's been made pretty clear that states do have the power to do this, but there have been several attempts to strike that down that have been successful because when they do restrict this, the restriction has to be very narrowly tailored to serve a legitimate government interest. And so you can't have really broad, like California just last year had their vanity vetting um, knocked out because they were just way too broad. They basically, their standard was offensive to good taste and decency. And the court said, no, 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 that's too broad. You mm -hmm. have to really limit it to obscene and profane things and so states have learned from that so Maine's going to try to you know really narrowly tailor theirs mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's been a free-for-all apparently like that lady with the van i mean it's her van's pretty funny uh, well yeah did they do that so they could make more money on these vanity plates knowing that people would go for profane vanity plates well it, it definitely caused an increase so now the state of maine is making two million dollars in extra revenue from vanity plates that they did not Hmm. have coming in before so they are going to 
they're going to miss out on that. But they just said it's gotten crazy. I mean, like the Secretary of State said that she used to play the license plate game with her kids on car trips, and she can't do it anymore because every other one has, like, the F-bomb. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Man, I just can't imagine any state sanctioning this. Yeah. I, I was And Maine, if you ask me, a state has done it. Probably my last choice, Maine, Vermont. I just didn't think they did stuff like no. that. You know? In fact, if I was to go visit Maine, I, and I saw all these plates everywhere with the F word, I'd be like, this is not the state I thought it was. I, I wouldn't expect F that. that. No. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. One that just says 6969696969. Six, nine, six, nine, six, nine, six, nine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, call me a pro. Oh, great ass. <laughs> <laughs> ass man. <laughs> You can call me a prude, but I don't want that on license plate. I mean, it's fun if they're clever or whatever. What state do you expect it to see it in? Vegas. Florida. Uh, Nevada. Nevada. Florida. 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 Florida, without a doubt. Yeah, not Maine, though. Yeah, not Maine. I, but now, one thing, one thing that's clear, though, is they can have bump, she can have all the profane bumper stickers she wants. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just when it, when it comes to a state-issued license tag, then the state has the ability to regulate that. But it's been made clear by the court's across years that you can have profane bumper stickers and that cannot be regulated because that's speech in every single state you can have a profane bumper sticker if you wanted to yeah you sure could okay because i see those yeah, bombs everywhere okay i see those and i give a chagrin i give a, a frown to people that have mm -hmm. those you know and and yeah. t-shirts also you know i see the t-shirts like yeah. i just yeah. we, we don't we don't cotton to that around no. at least around my house so no. Will this this woman won't be grandfathered in or anything? Tits out, we'll have to go. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. Put it back in. Usually, they don't grandfather people into that. It's it's usually either it's protected speech or it's not. Now she may fight it, you know, because she seems like a kind of person that would want to do that. Mm. But I think that Maine is going to be smart about it. Their Secretary of State, that is partly behind this, is a former director of the state ACLU, and so she's very much a person who has free speech as something that she values, but she just says this has just gone too far and there has to be some state action. Yeah. Well, now, so, so the, paint, the, the paint scheme across the back window says MILF Mobile? Correct. MILF. So you can get yeah. MILF yeah. MBL. Uh, yeah, I got, could she get MILF MBL? I bet she could on her license. Well, plate. the problem is that in other states where it's been regulated, as soon as the people, so a lot of times that'll slip by mm -hmm. and you'll get it, but then it'll get reported because the people who are, processing these may not understand what that means so it might slide by but if they knew what it meant they that's would right. they that's would reject it. it that's right i know that virginia was so strict at one point we report that people were they were staring at them trying to figure out are you doing anything dirty here you know they had a panel that's right yeah. or are you trying to get slip one bias here they've got 119,000 vanity plates registered in maine right Dang. now which is huge and as lisa said two yeah, million huge. two million Dollars, you Amy. should try to get MILF Mobile on your wife's van without her notice. <laughs> oh, yes. my God. Yes. What a good idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> Next year, it's a milestone anniversary. <laughs> it is. It's a gift. <laughs> Honey, you're welcome. <laughs> trying to, try to give her some. Lisa Lanier, thank you very much, as always. We'll keep a close eye on this. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. There she goes. Bye. Lisa Lanier, our official attorney of this program. You can find her at LanierLawGroup.com. I wonder what state started vanity plates and when. Pretty good I, mean, I don't ever remember them in the, growing up in the 70s. Sometimes you'd see them. Yeah. When it got into the 1980s, I remember seeing them a little bit, but very yeah. few. I think, you know, the first, I grew up in Virginia, and there was a, uh, a girl that went to my high school who graduated the same year, and she got DSF, which was our... Um, our high school, mm -hmm. Douglas Freeman, yeah. a DSF-80, yeah. which was our high school class in year. And that was 1979. That's pretty cool. I saw them in the 80s, but like you said, rare. rare but Virginia yeah. is filled with them. They're cheap in Virginia. Uh -huh. so if you do any driving in there, and we do, mm -hmm. there's tons of vanity plates. You don't see them as much here. I mean, occasionally. I, mean, I do see them. but mm -hmm. uh, They're easier to get now. Right. Remember that? My, my wife saw that one that time. We were coming out of Qdoba. T C H N kids. That's right. T C H N K I D S, which I immediately took for teaching kids. That must be a teacher. And my wife looked at it and said, "Man, wonder what that's all about? Touching, Creep. touching kids." <laughs> Most times, said, not out about it. Her brain goes right there. At the time, she was not teaching teacher, kids. No, she yeah. was not. Mm -mm. She said, "What is that all about? Touching kids?" And I said, "I, I believe that's probably." Teaching kids. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like touching to me. Probably the you know that's what I imagine I if you had asked and it was touching kids. Yeah. So are you a teacher? No. no. Uh, <laughs> what's that mean then? Uh, touching kids. <laughs> Legally, I have to tell you that. That's the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way. You I'm, an it. I'm an obstetrician. Yeah. That's right. You're gonna finish those chips. <laughs> that's right. 
Uh, but yeah, I would see them from time to time, and sometimes I'd have trouble figuring out what they were and all the. That was know, the fun part. Yeah, trying to figure out what they were. But it was a game show like that once, wasn't there? I believe so. They would do segments on the local news occasionally too. Yeah, you know, when the anchor, just like the anchors would try to figure out one when the camera people would see pictures during the day. Bumper stumpers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bumper stumpers. It was on some low grade cable channel. I watched it. Bumper stumpers. Did you audition for the host job? The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it went, it's not a far reach. I don't even remember who the host was. Well, I, whoever, same guy hosted Double Dare. Uh, that's uh, oh, that Mark guy. Summers. I think Mark Summers hosted Bumper oh, yeah, Stumpers. Yeah, yeah. That guy. And believe you me, I wanted that job. <laughs> you're darn right I wanted that. Uh, if you're within the sound of my voice right now and you have a child on TikTok, you need to listen up. What I'm saying now may save your life. Apparently, there are people on TikTok that are now sticking garlic up their nose. <laughs> I'm getting on there now. Doc Finally. <laughs> Doctors are warning. Videos showing users putting a garlic clove in each nostril and leaving them there up to 15 minutes saying it will clear the sinuses <laughs> if you have a cold. Doctors are saying this is not true. Usually, they pull out a clove and it's followed by a long trail of mucus. And doctors say this is not a healthy activity. You should Ish. not do this. They're warning of people uh, against people doing it because there's been an increase in people getting the cloves stuck up their nose. That's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and you have to go in and pull it back wriggle down. It out. Pull it back out and wriggle Wait, it out. With a clove, you should be able to just lance it and then pull and, it out. And right? pull I mean, it out. you could never get a tweezer around it. No, there's not. You'd have to. There's not the room. You'd have to split it. Exactly. They <laughs> have to chop it and dice it. You know, I, I thought about you, Dave. This is food related. I just you saw get the, the good knives. Yeah. Yep. I, I saw a thing about um, what people do in the kitchen. Uh, just a uh, survey of like, have you ever, do you follow like the, the five second rule where if you pick food up off the floor, 65% of people say they do this. It's, I don't know what it is. You know, in fact, I've done every single thing on the list. But the one I thought about with you, Dave, was 23% say they've cooked a full meal while drunk. And I know you, <laughs> whenever you bring us a recipe, it's always Dave's drunk recipes, like your hot dog and tor tortilla. And tortilla recipe. <laughs> that's just a simple one. That's just one. That, that's a midnight uh, snack. Yeah, that's, that's that's legendary for you, though. Yeah. But it, yeah, actually, I mean, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of people drink wine when they're cooking. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, some of us drink liquor, and it does make things a little tastier. Now, you'd never know it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> when you get served. <laughs> right. But it works. The other I mean, if you say ever, I mean, someone's probably, you, you may have gone to a beach house. You know, started drinking beers at 10 in the morning and made dinner that made night. Dinner. It's 23% seems low to, to be drunk and make a meal. I don't think almost everybody's made a meal yeah, drunk at one I point. I think more when you're drunk, though, more people lean towards the, let me get something delivered. Uh, probably. You yeah. know, can let me have the Uber stop by Taco well, Bell. Well, that's true. Plus, this is a full meal, so maybe. Oh, yeah. The, right, not a grilled cheese sandwich. Right. The other things, everything on here I've done, 70% uh, say instead of using measuring cups, you just eyeball it when you're on a recipe. You can do that in cooking. If you're baking something, it's more of a science. Like a cake. Precision counts. A cake, a pie, yeah. anything that's got a, a dough. Agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and your daughter's a baker, right, Kelly? She does. Yeah, she, she does. Just kind of, but the cookies are usually mm -hmm. pre-made. She well, just cuts the dough. Well, no, she makes a sugar cookie from scratch. Okay. And uh, she measures everything out. Does a pretty good job good for that. for her. Yeah, she's done well, you can't have those. No, I can't. Not on paleo. Mm. No? I slipped a little last night. Here oh. it comes. Bread course. What'd you slip on? Bread Here course. it comes. Bread and beer. Uh, you know, bread, bread and beer. beer. Bread and beer. Well, we were out to dinner. It was my anniversary. Were you Jesus? Listen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, this is more like a pirate. <laughs> yeah, right. We had bread and beer. I, we, we went out to a steakhouse last night and, you know, 445. Mm -hmm. Got in there. First table. <laughs> You should have seen the host. His eyes got real big. <laughs> <laughs> well, sit where you want. <laughs> it was our anniversary. Did he, did he scan the reservation list? He, he did. Let's see. <laughs> I think I put your table seven. <laughs> We're free till 630. <laughs> yeah, it started to get... Uh, Chef comes running in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got to be here early. <laughs> Stubs out a cigarette. Stubs a cigarette. Turn on the grill. <laughs> Takes a shot of white wine. <laughs> Yes, it was a 4.45 reservation, and we got there right on time, right on the dot at 4.45, and uh, had the whole place to ourselves. A be bet. Beautiful steakhouse. But I just had, they served us some bread, and even though I'm paleo, I said, I've got to have a little of this bread. Yeah, it's probably nice and fresh. So good. Yeah. With the, uh, it had a nice butter spread, and uh, it was butter. Just, I mean, I'm not supposed to have that either, but mm -hmm. for my anniversary. And I a mean, beer, too? I had to. You know, beer? I, just, I had to. Did I, it make ultra? 
Yeah, I did. And I said, you know, barely well, beer. Yeah. I said, I'll just do it. You know, mm-hmm. why not? Just... And you were leaving this by the time the other guests were showing up. Yeah. Once <laughs> I was, we were walking out and like other people were yeah. starting to walk in. I said, oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, people, look at these late eaters. <laughs> yeah. All nighters here. Home by six o'clock. Mm-hmm. And, and we made a couple of stops after, you know, a couple of things I had to pick up. Did your boy even know you were gone? No. He said, when are y'all going? <laughs> <laughs> Time to supper. He said, when are y'all leaving? I was like, oh, no, we're back, bro. We are. Uh, we have Todd on the phone who's talking about making meals while drunk. Todd, go ahead. Hey, uh, buddy of mine, well, actually, it was my sister-in-law's husband. Uh, now, we went to Asheville for the bachelor party. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were drinking SoCo and throwing cornhole all day when we got there. Mm-hmm. I was loaded, man. I remember wrapping the potatoes in aluminum and um, cooked steaks. And I don't remember anything from the pot- potatoes until we went out later that night. I don't remember cooking. I don't remember eating. But everybody says it was the best thing they ever had. <laughs> That's Dave Aiken cooking right there. It's a way to do That's it. That's how you do it. <laughs> you know how many Thanksgiving meals in this country have been prepared drunk? More than That's you think. That's how you do it. You should start that, Todd. You should be like the drunk chef. The drunk chef. On YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. Appreciate the phone call, as always. Uh, speaking of food, Chris Tim turned me on to this. Subway is revamping their menu in the biggest way ever. Uh, they will be closed. It'll take effect on July 13th. They're closing on July 12th for the whole day and redoing everything. Uh, they will be more than 20 menu updates, 11 new and improved ingredients, six all new sandwiches or returning sandwiches, and four revamped signature sandwiches. The club is back. <laughs> oh my God. The way it should be. I remember you With bringing the roast, roast beef, beef back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this mm-hmm. man was upset about this. Why do you think? Do you think they were having uh, falling sales, and that's why they've done this? Yes. I've been eating Subway. Is that right? You they know, are. They are having. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't, that I club didn't sub is the club sub of club subs in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's the club sub. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, when they open that next day, I will be there day one mm-hmm. to enjoy a club sub. You might get it free. Yeah, they're doing some free sandwiches. Giving sa- away $13 million million free sandwiches. Free sandwiches. I will be there. W- I'll wear a club sub t-shirt. I believe in the club I'm here sub. for the beef. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two new types of bread, artisan Italian and a hearty multigrain, hickory smoked bacon, smashed avocado, fresh mozzarella, and a new MVP Parmesan vinaigrette. All new things on the menu. Biggie's eschewing all these. Roast beef is That's back. That's roast the main back. thing. You yeah. buried the lead, according to Biggie. They got rid of it. Because they got rid of roast beef, and then they tried to pass it off as the turkey and ham club, which is just, I mean, what a lie. Try, trying to save money during the uh, pandemic? Yeah, that's what, what they was. claimed. And uh, Chris Tim's right. Their, their sales have slipped, so they are revamping everything again in about uh, three weeks. Uh, footnotes. That's next week. Oh, my oh my God, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Is it July now? It is July. We're well into July. What did I say, July 12th? Yeah, we're a weekend. That's uh, okay. a week yeah. from two days ago. Well, now I'm not going to have time to get a shirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> 